Hey guys, I thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and today we are back with another Eco Island Park episode. And I am so much enjoying the view from this uh, Asian otter habitat so, so much. It's just so cool to just uh, go around here with this, this, this circular roof and just see all the angles here. I'm really enjoying this habitat that we built in a previous episode so, so much. But I, I need to rush a little bit because something really sad just happened. Oh no, gosh, no, no, this, this is not right. This is not right. Oh gosh, he's already gone. Milo died of old age, you guys. Isn't that like super sad? I saw the message here and I was like, Oh my goodness, you, you, you're kidding me. This this is <laughs> it's almost heartbreaking. And Lumi is also an elderly, so it could like happen any time from here, which is just terrible if you ask me. Uh, we still have Lilo here and Lilo uh, is 1.2 years old. So Lilo is not grown up yet. I, I do really hope that uh, that Lumi will, will wait until her daughter uh, grows up because Elsa will be even more sad because then Lilo will be all by herself, all alone. So I really, really, Hope that is not gonna put on the light torch. Hope that's not going to happen. But there's also good news. Hold on, hold on. Before we go to the good news, I have some other great news to share. Because if you are still looking for Planet Zoo packs for PC or waiting for Planet Zoo on console to launch, make sure to check out the sponsor of our channel, Instant Gaming. Because via their website, you can get Planet Zoo and many other games like The Sims, City Skylands, Jurassic World Evolution, Farming Simulator, and many other fantastic games with a great discount. And by buying via their website, you will get a great discount and you will also be supporting the channel. You can find a link to their website in the description of this video and in the pinned message of the comment section so you can easily find it. Now let's get back into our Eco Island Park. I mean, just look, we have Aziza and Akin. Uh, they actually gave birth. Oh, here you are. Oh, just look at that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the little Adira, which means powerful woman, and I think it just fits so well. Just look at that adorable little face here. She's just so happy and confident. Gosh, oh, she looks so adorable. I'm so excited that we have a little baby black rhino in here now. <laughs> She's so cute. I don't know what it is. Like, there's something in her face. That just makes me so happy. <laughs> Absolutely adorable. So yeah, we thank goodness at least have something to celebrate even though Milo is gone. So uh, oh yeah, we can actually see the rhinos from here, which is just a perfect viewing. We still need to fix this. It's been uh, quite some time again since we did another episode and uh, yeah I, I have a new job and stuff but I also got the flu and I don't know about you guys like I know that many people had the flu or maybe you're still sick right now and it just really wiped me out energy wise I was just so exhausted for like a week or two after I recovered from the flu so yeah, I tried to take it easy because I also have like a normal job now. So uh, things are are still, uh, oh gosh, this looks so terrible. <laughs> but I still need to get used to everything in my new life and, and trying to see how to combine it with YouTube. So I do hope you guys don't mind. Oh, who do we have here? What are you going to do? Gabriel, you're doing a little talk about the Lar Gibbons. Oh, that's great. Right here in the sun, although I, I doubt if the guests would not complain about the heat here. I mean, all these guests here are like, oh gosh, it's so warm here. <laughs> Wait, oh, I thought for a second these guys were stuck. But yeah, oh man, this habitat, you guys, I'm just so excited about it. And it's so great to see that the Asian author is, is able to swim here. Now we're going to add the tapers in here. We're going to finish this habitat right over here to make sure that everything looks nice and pretty. This is the last habitat of the tropical house. So that's also pretty exciting 
not entirely sure if I'm able to like finish the outside walls and stuff already during this episode that might take a little bit longer and as I said in the previous episode I really don't want to rush things like we also need to add a wall right over here to make this all look nice and pretty I actually don't know what to do yet with these staff buildings we might want to move them to here or something so we can hide them a little bit better but for now, it's it's the most easiest spot here, so all the, the staff members are able to reach it. But this, this tropical house building is coming along so nicely. So, so happy with that and how this is turning out. So yeah, the last thing I want to do is like rush anything so we are going or t going to take our time to to finish this zoo and i do hope that at some point we will still see at least one more pack this year of planet zoo and i actually do hope to finish this zoo before that happens and so so that would be I don't know actually when that will be because the fact that Planet Zoo and Console is, is launching, at, what was it, the end of March? Which for me would be like the next DLC for Planet Zoo PC date. So I'm actually not really sure what to expect at this point. Like, are they going to launch the new pack on the same date? Are they going to launch a, a new last pack maybe uh, later on? So maybe in April, maybe in May. I really have no idea, but I do know that I want to try to at least finish this zoo before anything happens so maybe we can we can jump into like a new mini zoo with a new pack or something like we also got the eurasian animal pack oh, look at that wiggle <laughs> of which i'm not really sure like those animals apart from the sega oh yes the sega um, like, I don't really find those animals fitting, but I, I do really feel like I maybe want to do a little bit, something like a, a mini city zoo, and then add some more Eurasia animal pack animals, but that really also depends uh, of, like, the, the animals that will be in the next Planet Zoo PC. I, I'm gonna call it PC now. <laughs> PC pack, because, like, for consoles, I'm pretty sure that the, what Whatever we are going to get for PC, I think that one will be moved to like um, one of the last packs launching for consoles, which will be like a, a year after or something. Oh man, these guys are just so pretty, aren't they? I am really am happy that we were able to add these animals in this zoo. Like the other animals just don't really fit that well, so it's, it's great to see these super interesting animals to, to be enjoying themselves in our zoo right over here we still don't have babies in here either do we i don't think so we have some offspring oh yeah okay year 54 oh this one oh wait that's a male and um, we have year 55 so this is definitely gonna take some time i did see a message here but that's the expecting offspring yeah so uh oh we also had wait had offspring oh i thought it was uh, saying something like uh, someone died but that was not the case so yeah our butterfly garden is still up and running so i don't really think that I, we, we don't really have to manage anything i still wonder like should we ever ask for frontier for like a management thing for habitats sometimes i feel like we should i think maybe even with console they should add something like that into the game because i can't imagine that animals on console with the building limit will have some kind of effect to that so if you are able to handle the habitat animals a little bit easier and make sure that uh, if they grow up they will be automatically released or sold it could make things a little bit easier however it's also just a lot more fun to be able to control that like we are doing right now hi beauty how are you tartuga anyways okay we're not going to talk constantly about consoles it's just something that i'm thinking about a lot like how are they going to do that how what will the restrictions be i really have no idea uh, but everything is going pretty well here, I think. How are... Okay, so we have Tiggy and Lucifer. Oh, yes. Dracula and Razkal. 
<gasps> oh my goodness, I still love those names so much. Just look at this little one. Wait, is my light torch still on? Oh my goodness, yeah, it's not even having that much effect at being so dark. Oh, you're so cute! <laughs> Anyways, okay, enough talking. We should go and give our new wait- they're waiting here in quarantine, aren't they? Oh wait, no, that's the imaginarian. So right over here in quarantine, we have Mushi and Apaches waiting to uh, go to their new habitat right over here. And these two were rescued from a forest fire in Thailand. So the Malaysian taper is in danger due to habitat loss through deforestation and deconversion of land for agricultural use. So there are only around 3,000 tapers left in the wild. So hopefully with their conservation efforts in or eco Island Park, we are able to increase that number. So they will be getting a habitat here combined with the Asian small clot otter. I think I'm still going to try to see if these guys are not able to go outside. So they then will only be able to use this indoor area right over here, which definitely needs some decoration. So yeah, without further talking, let's just go and start working on this habitat to give the Malaysian tapirs a nice home in our zoo. Now I was a little bit struggling at the beginning, like where am I going to start here for, for finishing this habitat? I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to fill in the whole area, how I wanted to do it. So I first just thought, okay, we have like this opening going to the outside. Let's just make sure that we have some kind of wall here and just see from there what we can do here or how we can close everything off. So yeah, I definitely started working on this habitat without any plan. I know that some people are always like, oh, how did you get inspiration? Well, sometimes... I just have no idea how to start either, so I just start somewhere and just see where I end up pretty much. And this is definitely one of those examples of how I did that. So uh, yeah, I had that wall first and then I wasn't entirely sure how to do it still. So then I decided to just go and cover up all the edges on the side. So I wanted to keep it in the same style as all the other habitats that we have, of course, in this tropical house. So I started with like the tiny rocks and then later on uh, started with the fences that we also have for the orangutan and Largibbon habitat. And then I just pretty much moved over to uh, the outside so the walls on the outside even though I actually just said like I I don't know if I'm gonna do any of the outside walls and then I was like oh man I just don't know exactly what to do with the habitat yet so let's just go and start working on the outside instead because most of this is just pretty much copy pasting like the windows and such and and like those those, those curtains to the right spot and just make sure that everything is nicely connected and nicely closed and stuff. Uh, so yeah, adding the, all these glass windows here definitely already gives you more of the feeling and, and the vibe of, of the building being more, getting more finished. It's like not entirely finished, so you will see that at the end of this video. But yeah, it's definitely coming along quite nicely at this point. We only still need to fill up some some tropical stuff and especially like around the Komodo dragon habitat. I think that is definitely the most unfinished area still uh, from this whole section if you ask me. Uh, but we will get there. We will get there definitely and uh, I'm just already super happy with the progress that we've made here around this whole tropical house building. So the back side of the area, and I think I can explain it the best to just call it in between the rhino and we have like a few shops on the other side of the taper habitat. We will be closing that off with like a lot of the uh, plaster pieces as well. And uh, later on, uh, because I find the plaster pieces great, 
but not for everywhere. So I I want to avoid it to become very boring and very concrete-ish, if we can call it that way. Uh, but yeah, so we will cover that a lot with like uh, rocks and roots and plants and stuff. We will get back to that later on because we will be doing the same with the wall that we have on the uh, inside of that water area for the otters and the tapirs. I'm not going to very neatly close off everything for like that section or like that river that will go from the inside to the outside like we will be covering the edges and the roof with some plastic pieces but there will be uh, some plants sticking out and stuff like uh, I don't really mind that too much it's it's nothing that the guests will see and as soon as guests are not able to see it I very often, apart from a little bit of the backstage areas here, but I very often am just like, oh yeah, well, the guests can't see it, so I'm not going to be bothered too much about that. Uh, but we will be adding a little bit of a staff area or backstage area here for the... Uh, and animals as well, uh, but it's also not super visible. So uh, yeah, it just depends how my mood is, I guess. Uh, so yeah, and at this point, I decided to go for a waterfall for these animals. So uh, since we don't have that much space here, it's not really doable to use like those those waterfall blocks that we have from the aquatic pack. So we are going to use the V of axis in this case. Now, actually, when I was working on this waterfall and adding the view of axis. oh man I, I could tell that I wasn't really used to placing these anymore it, it's been so long so I had quite a struggle with the right angle to put them down and then later on I, I started working on like these edges with the with the aquatic rocks and stuff to make it all look a little bit more interesting and not like super plain with like these plaster walls and stuff and then later on i noticed that the waterfall on the other side was sticking out that was like pretty much when the whole wall was finished on the front and then it was like oh shoo the waterfall is is coming out of the, or sticking through the panels on the other side so i then decided to just use that in my advantage i guess or at least use that to build around it and just also oh actually now i'm looking at the footage and i'm like oh yeah i wasn't very far in just yet but when i realized that the waterfalls were sticking out of the plaster walls on the other side i was just like you know what how often do you see like these waterfalls just just uh, floating right next to a gas pad like we are in a tropical biome so it's probably super warm here so having like this waterfall that will just have a little breeze as well of of, of cool air and and some water sprinkling here and there for the guests, I am sure that some guests, and especially the kids, really don't mind walking uh, next to a waterfall like this. So yes, let's just make sure that we will have a little waterfall here as well on the other side. And uh, yeah, it just works super well if you ask me uh, to have this split off. And later on, I will be adding some of the uh, benches here and there to make sure that the guests can also just sit there in front of the waterfall and just look out side to the beautiful viewing that we have from the island towards the sea like we still need to add a lot of foliage here and there but obviously you will get the idea later on when i will show you guys around uh, around this habitat and the finished habitat and the finished area i should say uh, so yeah we are going to cover a lot here of the walls with also the aquatic rocks just to make sure that it's all looking a little bit more natural and I like I don't want to see too much of the plaster pieces from the in oh gosh okay that was my water bottle if, <laughs> if you heard anything um, but yeah I just want to make sure that there's not too much visible of the plaster pieces inside of the habitat there will be still a little bit of an open area at the uh, at the entrance or like that river so we will do the same as we did at the other side so we will have some uh, uh, chain link fences and some of the metal beams to, to make it feel a little bit like there is some kind of gate as well that could be closed off if, if the keepers want to for whatever reason if they want to close off the outside area from the inside area or something like that so I, I also just wanted to make sure that it is 
is the same style that we have on the outside of the building, even though you will not be able to see much of the uh, plaster pieces around here. And we will obviously uh, be covering a lot of these these rocky walls with some roots and some some green tropical plants and stuff, just like we did on the outside, because I just really do love the vibe and the look of it. And I think especially because this is such a small habitat, like the whole area definitely turned out to be a lot smaller than I initially thought when I was building this area. I mean, hello, I actually thought that one habitat going to the outside would be a gharial habitat and then we would also have space for the tapers and the otters, but clearly we do not have enough space for that, unfortunately, so that is why I decided to not add the gharial in here. Maybe we should be adding the gharial still somewhere else around the, the, the island. I mean, I'm not really sure if we should be going for more indoor buildings. On the other hand, I just really do love to make some buildings, but I'm not really sure we have space for that yet. I'm not really sure we should go for like an outdoor Gary Havis I'm not really sure how, how do you guys feel about that in general like later on I will also ask you guys to to give me some some animal suggestions of course uh, for the rest of our zoo and for the next episode so definitely do share all your thoughts and ideas in the comments down below uh, but back to this build right over here. I also did want to add some more of the uh, lovely donator signs for all the FaveFan members of uh, supporting me on YouTube as a little thank you. So uh, this is why we are adding these signs right over here and hiding it away a little bit into the walls with like all these, these rocks around it to make sure that it blends in all nicely. We're also going to do that on the other side of the wall where I just said like I, I want to hide as much as possible from the plaster pieces but there will also be some 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 doorways and stuff going to uh there i think there's one door for the toilet building there's one door for a staff building and then we have another doorway that is pretty much for the path that is leading towards the backstage area uh that is going to the tapers but also going to uh the 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 what is it called the black rhino habitat uh, now we still need to do a lot of decorating there as well i'm not really uh, showing that at the end of the video uh, either but once that is finished i will obviously show you guys as well the more backstage backside area here because that is definitely not decorated only the um, backstage area for the otters and tapers is also in the in the end tour of this video uh but yeah definitely playing around a lot with the roots and the, the green tropical plants to make that tropical vibe still but as i said like everything is pretty small here so all the walls and stuff are pretty narrow so we really do have to pay attention to what we are placing down because it can't be th too thick and i also had issues here as well for like Placing down plants in general because there are mostly two layers, like we have a pretty big planter area as well on the inside of the tropical house, uh, but like you think, oh yeah, I can just put down everything, but you guys know me and I just want to uh, squeeze in so many plants or, or use trees and sink them into the ground and then have them like a, like a bush instead of being a plant, for example. But yeah, you really have to pay attention to what is sticking out underneath because uh, at, at that planter area, that is mostly covered uh, or that is like on top of that river that is going to the outside so yeah there is a little bit stucking th sticking through there because i just really like the look of some of the plants and and then i'm like yeah well okay the guests cannot really see it so let's just keep it like it is right now but I have a hard time working with with the tropical plants sometimes because I'm just not able to use what I really want to use and and as well goes for like that staff or backstage area for the uh, tapers and otters that we are working on right now so I decided to make that a little bit bigger also to make sure that the uh, tapers and otters will have a little bit more privacy 
that does mean that there will be like a, a thin uh, ceiling on top of there and then I decided to create a planter of that as well but then I really do need to pay attention to how I put down my plants and stuff I'm going to try to keep as much foliage work as possible in this speed build because I know I've been cutting it out very often in the first few episodes but I know that a lot of you guys also really do like to see how I put down my plans and stuff I will do always do my best but uh, these commentaries can sometimes feel so long if there is the same kind of stuff happening in in my my own own screen as well when I'm looking at it and I'm like normally before I got my daytime job I was always like writing down my whole script and stuff and I was preparing a lot beforehand so if you're now like oh a lady is talking different and maybe sometimes a bit confusing that is because I'm now also just watching the same speed build as you guys because I, I I tried to do it differently and then it's but it's so hard when you have like this voiceover and then connect it nicely again with the speed build so I think this uh, now what I'm doing right now works a lot better especially for you guys to follow it whenever I'm talking about what is happening uh, in the video itself but yeah, if there's like tons of foliage work and I just have no idea what to talk about anymore, then I'm just like, yeah, well, <laughs> I could just also add music in there. So maybe, maybe I will do that. If there is some music, then you know that I'm just not able to, to figure out what to talk about here because there's just a lot of the same stuff happening here and there. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's go back to this this backstage area. I, I tried to cover the edges right nicely uh, with uh, some more of those those aquatic rocks and then at uh, some mulch here and there. I, I will be covering like a lot of the rock formations here as well with the mulch just, just to give it more of the feeling like there are no wild plants growing around this habitat. There are only like... No, I wanted to say strategically, but it's not really strategically, but just well thought of planters here and there. So there is only plants growing on top of these planters and, and nothing growing wildly into the habitat, if that makes any sense. I do hope so. So yeah, you will see me using a lot of the mulch later on as well. Now I was a little bit debating if I wanted to do like this this staff area as well because the tapers are not having that much base. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it did turn on the 100% welfare at this point. <laughs> like there are so many little things that I just can't pay attention to at this point anymore more because I just don't have that much time anymore to to work on these episodes and then like the most fun thing for me is definitely just building the habitat and just putting all my creativity and 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 time into the detailing of the habitats and I just don't want to struggle too much with like, oh gosh, okay, the tapers need 400 cubic meters of more space or anything like that. Like, where am I going to find that space? How am I going to change the plans? That is like so much fun as well and so much challenging, but also like so time consuming. And at this point, I just unfortunately don't have like... Uh, I, I normally, before I had my new job, I had like three, maybe four days to work on one episode. So I was really able to plan out a lot more things and to do a lot more research and to do a lot more research on the animals and all those kind of things. And now I'm like, I need to squeeze everything in one day and if I have a little bit more time during the weekend then I will be able to spread it out maybe over two days but I really try also for myself to do it in one day so I still have like a little bit of free time left you know what I mean so I do hope you guys can forgive me for the fact that I start to be cheating a little bit more here and there just to be able to make something nice looking and, and instead of like paying too much attention to how much space the animals would need to sell because really in all honesty 
these tapirs would not be probably be super happy with the amount of space they they have in this habitat and i really regret not building this this whole tropical house a little bit bigger uh it is what it is i guess so i, I do hope you guys still enjoy seeing me building just some beautiful habitats for these amazing animals that we are adding in this zoo and maybe not focusing too too much anymore about the the challenging part of this zoo like we're still obviously focusing on the the eco island and like releasing animals into the wild and everything but yeah things unfortunately have to change a little bit and uh i am just really having a lot of fun still working on this zoo as much as i can at this point and just make some some beautiful habitats for these amazing beautiful critically endangered and endangered animals that we are adding in this zoo so yeah i do really hope you guys enjoy it so for the habitat itself because i'm rambling here again but for the half that itself, I wanted to make sure that, like, it was quite an open space. And to make sure that the, the, the Traverse of Area, obviously, is not reduced too much, uh, but still keeping it interesting, I wanted to play around a little bit more with, like, these these rocks sticking out here and there and as i said creating some kind of planters out of that so on top of that a little bit of mulch and then trying to pick some some tropical plants that fit well to make it all look a little bit more dense still uh, and that is also what i try to do because i can imagine that the guests are walking around this this whole habitat and you want them to still be able to look into different areas and and make it look a little bit more interesting for whatever angle they are looking into the habitat if that makes any sense so yeah by adding like these rock formations here and there i, I at least try to still make the habitat a little bit more interesting from no matter what angle the guests are looking into the habitat the only area that is a little bit more open uh, is the area right in front of where they they are able to get out of that backstage area if that makes any sense so that is a little bit more open compared to the rest of the area and i also added like a lot of enrichment items of course around i, I actually felt like i really wanted to add the mud pool as well for the otters but i just really didn't have space for that so at least i was able to put in like the uh, forage box feeder and stuff uh, but yeah, I, I was a little bit struggling here with the lack of space. But yeah, that area on, on one side uh, of the, the, the backstage area is still a little bit more open. But yeah, that was also because else it would all just be way too narrow, I guess. But it still added a lot of the, the rock, the, the small little rocks from the aquatic pack here and there because else it would be too boring, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in general, I'm definitely super happy with how everything has turned out. Like the, the foliage work wasn't really struggling at this point because as I said, like uh, sometimes you're not able to stick things through the ground or plants are too big. And so it took quite a lot of time to, to get the right foliage work in the right spot. But in the end, it definitely turned out very nicely. I'm very happy with uh, how everything is looking at this point. But yeah, before I start rambling even more and more, because I think right now we will only be seeing some more foliage work and a little bit of work of the, the rocky wall on the back side of this area. So uh, I'm just going to leave you guys with a little bit of music and I will see you guys later on for a nice tour and uh, introducing you guys to a lot of the new animals that we, uh, we got in our Eco Island Park.
so quickly before we show the whole habitat right over here we have this really happy face as a cute which is now going to help cleaning the otter and tapir habitat welcome to our staff team and we also have natalie right over here which is going to help as a caretaker to clean up all the mess that the guests are leaving and another very happy face is darren right over here welcome everyone to our eagle island park staff team if you want any staff member to be named after you then definitely do make sure to leave your first name in the comments down below and who knows i might be able to hire you guys as well to be working in our eagle island park soon uh, so let's just start right over here because this right over here is the backside of the asian otter and tapir habitat so right over here we have some signs here for our fafa members i was finally able to squeeze in some new signs so this is just a small thank you to everyone being a youtube member on the channel really do appreciate all your support so you guys are now all asian otter donators we have two signs right over here so then if we walk here let's just unpause the game for a second we have a nice uh, waterfall right over here and guests being able to just look here at this beautiful viewing of the sea of the island obviously we do need to decorate this still but i love this view you, you can see my light torch here in the glass in case you're wondering like what a weird sun uh so yeah we have a waterfall on this side uh, you see we we definitely need some cleaning here oh i also need to add some educational signs still but uh yeah so this is the combined habitat now for the asian small claw daughter and the tapir so they have a waterfall here as well you can tell why i added the waterfall on the other side because it was a little bit sticking out so i thought let's just have one on this side and one on the other side so it doesn't uh, feel that obvious so the asian otters are still able to go outside here and for the habitat itself i chose to uh make sure that it's like not super filled but yet still a little bit interesting with little corners little rocks here and there and, and yeah call it planters if you will with some plants growing on top of it i really do like this wall we also did that on the other side here as well and i also try to uh, keep the same style here at this wall right over here and we also did hide well not hide but just implemented some doorways so i think there's a staff room here and this is the path leading towards the backstage area here for the uh, otters and tapers and rhinos and here is the entrance for a toilet building and i think it's just fine here obviously we still need to work on this whole area right over here because this is definitely not finished and i have no idea still how I am going to hide these uh, these curtains, so I'm not entirely sure yet. Oh, look at that! They're already here! Patches! Oh man, I just love this name so much! And and this is uh, uh, Mushi. Thank you all so much for all the name suggestions, by the way. And also, do keep them coming, because obviously, well, hopefully, we will be seeing some offspring here for Mushi and, and Patchy. Uh, patches, oh my gosh, lady, Patches. <laughs> Hopefully we will see some offspring in the near future from these guys. So we do need some name suggestions for that and also for the Asian small clot other offspring. So that will be super amazing. Uh, I did, they're not like able to, to walk here. I should have like maybe hidden this, this edge of the path as well. But on the other hand, you will not be able to see that from here. So they have a forge box feeder here. A little bit hidden into the terrain i always like to do that because i'm not like a huge fan of the the wooden edges on it and uh, yeah by having these planters here on the edge we are also able to hide a little bit here of the rhino entrance since that is like not per se part of this area i did cover this like there was like a little hole here in between the path so i now cover this nicely and i hear a lot of right oh look at that <laughs> i hear a lot of rhinos what are they doing i hear oh wait that was weird it really felt that they were like running super fast or anything I, I don't know but yeah this is now all cleaned and nice and i actually don't know if i should add curtains right over here as well just to split this off a little bit more what do you guys think should we do that uh but yeah so we have this wall right over here just 
like a mixture of all these these rocks and stuff to 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 make the wall a little bit more interesting and not like uh, look like plaster and uh, yeah we have still a lot of uh, spots here left to become a uh, malaysian taper donator but also in the future uh, for the komodo dragons i don't think that i have a sign here just yet for the komodo dragon donators but as you can tell here we still have a lot of work to do yeah okay i already did add the signs here but obviously we need to uh recolor them maybe to make them uh, fit nicely so yeah uh, all the new names that will become a uh, fava member will be added to that list as a little thank you for all the support of you guys on the channel obviously uh, so yeah the habitat is now finished we still have some work to do to uh, to complete this area and i'm super excited because it really is coming along quite nicely i i do have to admit like my first vision that i had for the indoor area of this building was a little bit different i guess uh, but yeah, I soon just noticed like the space is a little bit of an issue So I had to work with that a little bit and I don't know It's just hard to to really know when you start out like how much space you need Oh my goodness, who is making this noise here? Hi cutie Oh gosh, it's been so long that I forgot all the names But this is Ying and then we have Yang somewhere walking around here as well uh, but uh, yeah, this this building is definitely coming along quite nicely, even though it is smaller than I had in mind first. Oh man, you here? I just love it, and I think I think it's still all right to make sure that the tapers are not able to go outside here. Just only have the Asian tape, uh, Asian tapers, <laughs> the Asian small clot otters going here. Oh, that's right. I had these viewing domes here, but I still don't really have a spot for the entrance. I actually tried to hide it at some point right over here, but it just wasn't really doable. So I think we're just going to leave it as it is and then just not connect it, I guess, to an entrance. But also the view from here now really looks super nice as well from the indoor area. Just having the glass panels all the way around this building definitely looks so much better already. We still need to fill this up, by the way. So we have a little bit of a space left here and then the outside here to fill up with some some tropical trees and plants but it already does look a lot better and then we have this this concrete wall or plaster wall going down here so oh man yeah i'm super happy with how this is all looking oh yes okay we have babies we have so many babies in here and oh they make so much cute noises oh gosh i love these guys Ah, <laughs> where are they? Oh, look, who's this? We, okay, we have Trunk, we have Blaze, and right over here, no, wait, no, no, you, I did not see you yet, wait a second, this is not the name you guys gave me, hold on, there we go, going to name you Silly, because you guys... Uh, make silly noises and it's just too cute but okay we have silly we have blaze we have trunk and where where is she where is she here she is here she is nosy so we already have four little sega babies in here isn't that amazing i don't even think yeah oh well the dama gazelles also got some offspring but oh my goodness look at that adorable little face like, I, I dare to say that they're almost as cute as the derpy bungo face. The, the babies of the bungos are just so adorable. It's been so long since we've seen them, though. But I'm not really sure if we are going to add the bungos in the zoo as well. But my goodness, these guys are so adorable. And I just love, love, love the names that you guys gave. So thank you so much for that. So should we already check if we have some offspring in here? I mean, I think so. I think we do have some offspring. Yes, there we go. So we have a little chocolate right over here. A baby Dama Gazelle. Just look how beautiful they look. I just love the color scheme of these guys. Oh, wait. There was no sound when you opened your mouth. 
I guess that's a little bug, but my gosh, you also look super adorable though. But yeah, <laughs> this Sega is even more cute, but they are definitely super cute. I do have to say, we do need some more names for the Dama Gazelle. We have coffee right over here, but I could definitely use some more offspring names for these adorable adorable little ones in here so please do share some more names in the comments down below for these beautiful animals and uh, yeah i think we are in year 55 so very soon actually the where are they the uh, scimitar horned oryx should also be bringing some offspring year 56 and i think the other one was 55 or something so uh yeah that is definitely about to happen as well so if you do have some morning suggestions uh, keep them coming guys keep them coming because i absolutely love all these adorable names that you guys are giving uh, giving these animals so uh let's go here because I'm not entirely sure yet, but I think Lilo is grown up now. Lumi is an elderly and Lilo is an outsider. So what we have right now, we, we lost Milo. So I actually am thinking, look at you, Lilo. You are so beautiful. Uh, so you're an outsider, but we are going to wait until Lumi, your mommy, is uh, going to pass away. And then I think we should be adding... I actually don't know if you can have two females or more in a habitat or that that is already an issue. Like, okay, they became an outsider. Female bachelor group? It's actually all right. So I think... I think, yeah, I think what we're just going to do is wait until Lumi, um, oh, wait a second, we can actually rehome Lumi, shall we do that? No, it will be sad to, to, to bring her somewhere else for maybe like her last years or months, so we should not do that. We should just wait and then find a little boyfriend for Lilo in here, so if you have any name suggestions for the boyfriend of Lilo, do let me know as well in the comments. So many name suggestions. I know, I know, but I just love it so much. All right, all right. Just one more question then. Do let me know in the comments down below what you guys all think of this last habitat, pretty much, for this tropical house for the beautiful Malaysian tapirs that entered our zoo today. I love these guys so, so much. And also, what animal shall we add next to our zoo? I mean, uh, yeah, we can't really add any more habitat inside here but we definitely do have some space left to add right over here i actually have no idea yet where we are going to build but that also depends on what animal you guys will suggest so do let me know some suggestions of endangered or critically endangered animals in the comments down below so we can do uh, another poll on the community wall this week and uh, I'm just super excited to see what kind of animal will come out of there and then to see where we are going to build a new habitat here. I'm actually also pretty, pretty excited that the tropical house, apart from some walls and stuff that we will finish very soon, it's, it's pretty much finished. And that's just freaking amazing, isn't it? So yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you guys all thought of this episode. Leave a like and video if you guys enjoyed it and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. But yeah, I just really do hope to see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys.